The only market, like I mentioned, which is in the green from the Asia pack is the Taiwanese index. Before this rally started, the Nifty Bank was the weaker of the two indices. So here, supports for the index come in at 46.674. TV18 and E18 will consolidate with Network 18. They will reduce uh, less than 50,000 uh, ticket size of loans and expand into higher ticket size loan. Five, Five four, four, three, two, two one. one. Easier now to tell particularly foreign investors sitting on the sideline that, hey, don't waste your time. We believe success is going to come out of doing things really well, raising the bar at every stage. We have got a loan book about 36 trillion, 35, 36 trillion. Fortunately for us, I think we scouted around and got a technology tie-up with the Free Energy of France. So I don't think we can maintain this pace. We, we need calibration, otherwise wrong things to start happening. It's been an effort of learning, of disrupting ourselves, of creating this category of the business news genre in India. The Nifty is down 20 points, though it has recovered 20, uh, 70 points from the lows of the day as well. Well, uh, that's basically the day so far and what a day it has been, full of celebration uh, here on this uh, birthday, CNBC TV 18, uh, celebrating 24 years. We're coming to you live uh, this last hour from the CNBC TV 18 Mothir Roosevelt Studios. This is Closing Bell. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues Reema and Nigel. Guys, hi. Hi, another good day, right? Above uh, 20,900, mildly in the red, 21 points down. But look at the mid-cap index. I mean, uh, not even a pullback, right? You, it doesn't even uh, qualify as a pullback yeah. because yeah. you need some, some red, uh, <laughs> which is uh, not the case. You know, just a couple of points. Uh, it's been a terrific run and uh, that's essentially what we uh, have been highlighting. A thousand points in six sessions, right? So it's been quite something. Uh, we lo It looked like uh, there was a pullback in the morning. Uh, the Nifty was down, I think, about 70, 80 points. Uh, but it's kind of, kind of completely come, uh, come up now, just 20 points lower. Uh, that's it. The Nifty is not broken. The, uh, the, the nearest kind of support we, which, which I put out in the morning, which is 27.95. Actually, we got to about 30, 40 points of it, but never broke it, never once today. And of course, now there is some distance between that level. Uh, but, and, uh, you know, the idea was to kind of try and buy closer to the levels and uh, the risk-reward risk in that sense becomes positive. Uh, indecision, I, could, I would say, on the Nifty Bank, it closed in the red yesterday, the Nifty Bank. Uh, and uh, we'll see. I think a positive close today uh, should give confidence because the Nifty Bank has got unfinished business. Uh, the level is 47,700, which it still needs to do. So unlike the Nifty, the Bank Nifty did not do that. Uh, the 40-hour average, and we're very close to it right now for the Nifty Bank. Similarly, I mean, the corresponding level on the hourly charts is 46,470 uh, for the uh, Bank Nifty. While we were coming in, we were, I think, about uh, 20 points away from it. I think a little bit more in terms of a gap as the market and as the index has turned into the green. So that's where we're at. Not really a whole lot to learn about uh, the direction of the market, etc. Just in a holding pattern, at least for the last couple of hours after the first hour, which was more on the downside. Prima. Uh, that's a nice way to put it, right? Holding pattern, uh, at least when it comes to the benchmark indices. But the day belongs to the mid-cap index. The mid-cap index has come back pretty strongly. That's up close to about half 4%. If you remember, on the first day of the breakout, the mid-cap index was lagging the frontliners. But today, you are seeing that catch-up in the mid-cap uh, universe. And look at individual names. An IEX, a Tata Power. Tata Power is up 13% and on very, very large volumes. Once again, the PSU stocks are on fire. The CPSC index has now seen a rally of about 6.5% this week. And today, too, the CPN, CPSC index um, is, you know, surging in trade with a gain of close to about a percent and a half. And individual stocks like an NHPC, SJVN, Hutco, oh, these are phenomenal gains, right, day on day. Uh, on these stocks. Well, that's right. You know, Rima, for the second day running, 20,850 was tested. Yesterday, 20,852. Today, the low is 20,850. So, the 20,830, which we pointed out earlier today, 20,830 to 20,850, that's a support zone. We went out there, and from there, we have quickly bounced from the low point of the day. So, that should be one of the reference marks that you should be looking at. Well, how do you position yourself, though, for the final hour of trade? We have an element of weekly expiry as well that will play out on the Nifty. So keep an eye out on that. Mitesh Tucker joins us. Mitesh, well, I think earlier today you were sounding a little bit more constructive on the Nifty Bank from the day's low. That seems to have worked as of now. How would you trade it? Would you uh, book some profits? Will you carry that position? 
So, Nigel, I think, you know, uh, the idea was that today I said, uh, if there's a dip, uh, the bank nifty was closer to the support area. So, the, from the risk reward equation, buying into the bank nifty around 46, 500, 550 zones, which is what we recommended and which is what we did, was uh, looking like a better trade in terms of purely a risk reward equation. So, I think uh, that's worked out well. Both the indices remain in uptrend. The nifty is, you know, marginally outperforming the bank nifty, barring today, I think, you know, but if you look at the last few days, and therefore, I think, you know, we are not getting a correction happening in the Nifty or it's not coming to my buying zone. But that's okay. I think, you know, if you have long positions, just hold them. The, the directional bias remains on the upside. And if you get, in, in case you get a bigger decline because you've had a good rally for the last five, six sessions, then I think, you know, you would want to look at support levels to buy into it. Having said that, the stock calls that I have, a buy on Hoodco uh, with a stop at about uh, 89 for targets of 100. And Zydus Wellness is the other one which uh, I must uh, put a disclaimer. Zydus Life, sorry, which I must put a disclaimer that I have uh, positions in the futures market, so I have vested interest. But that's looking like starting a new trend. So buy here with a stop at 640 for a target of 680. All right. Uh... Mitesh, uh, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, great uh, getting those uh, trades across and we'll come back to you for more. Sanjay Parikh is now joining us. He's founder and uh, CIO at uh, Soham uh, Asset Management. Uh, Sanjay, great to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time and uh, it's a special day. We're celebrating yes. our uh, birthday, two and a half decades. Uh, so, yeah, uh, great to speak with you. Uh, no, I just want to congratulate you and I've watched the all 24 years and the way you handle an investor, help them in the wealth creation journey. And, you know, I remembered, as Warren Buffett says, you know, the team has integrity, intensity, and, you know, intellect, all three. So that combination of the entire team has helped the investor a lot. So congratulations. Well, thanks very much. Uh, thanks uh, on behalf, behalf of my co-anchors, <laughs> Nigel and Reeman, of course, the entire team has very well put. Uh, uh, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, Talk about here and now, uh, Sanjay. What a phenomenal rally, right? And what a week we've had. Uh, just, uh, y y actually, even pre-election results, I remember having a chat with Ramdi Ogarwalji. He was saying, you know, post-elections, one way or the other, we're getting a rally. But this kind yeah. of a rally, I don't think even he uh, sort of expected. What's the sense from here, uh, uh, Sanjay? Is there uh, more to go in this leg up? A lot of people are asking us that. Uh, why, don't, why don't we begin there? Yeah, so, you know, of course, the results uh, have given more certainty to 2024 of a stability. Um, and that probability has significantly increased and hence continuity of reforms uh, is an important driver. And then, you know, we go back to earnings uh, wherein next year on 24, 25 at 1100 rupees of earnings, um, and then 25, 26, where it gets now more certain if we have stability. Uh, and if we just broadly look at nominal GDP growth plus a little more, then we are talking of 1250 rupees earning of 25, 26. And India has been now on an average 20 times for the continued consistency of growth. Uh, then we're talking about 25,000 in 18 months which is almost like a percent, almost 12, 12, 13% annualized from a current level as well. So, which is not bad, uh, you know, if somebody's participated right from the beginning. And uh, obviously there could be some uh, risk always, but the risk return I think is still favorable if one has an 18 month view. Uh, having said that in the near term, obviously, you know, you think that it's more like fair value plus and uh, that's the nature of the market. Uh, Sanjay, afternoon. Uh, this um, EPS estimate uh, forecast of about mid-teens to high-teens that the market has for next year, uh, yes. is that under risk, do you think? Is there a threat to that? Because the margin expansion benefit is now coming to an end uh, and maybe yes. that could reverse going ahead, especially for the consumption stocks. Right. So, Rima, uh, you know, we do for Nifty very closely and their estimates of brokerage is right from thousands uh, for next year, 1,070 to 1,150. But by and large, uh, we, when, we, when we look at bottom-up and even if we take reasonable assumptions, uh, we, we believe that uh, the, the you know, number of 1,100 look, doesn't look to be disappointing. Um, and particularly now, crude is also benign, uh, which could be a very important driver of earnings. Commodity prices are broadly benign. Uh, you know, the China, uh, clearly there are, uh, you know, still issues there. So 
China cannot be a driver of commodity for sure in the recent near term. So all that will really help us in our earnings growth rate. Uh, and it looks to be a reasonable uh, estimate to have for 24, 25, 1100. For 25, 26, yes, we don't have visibility, uh, as much visibility. But, you know, if nominal GDP were to grow at 10, 11 percent, earnings growth of 13 to 15 percent is not difficult, which takes us to 1250. And that is where uh, an 18 months from now, people will look at 25, 26. So as we are transiting, we are in December, we'll transit to next year where people will look at both the years. And that's where I believe that uh, it's a possible estimate of around 25,000 in 18 months with a 3 to 5% risk from the current level. And that's the risk return we see. Hi, Sanjay. Uh, good afternoon. Nigel on this side, you know, made a lot of friends, a lot of people who have taught me about markets over the years. And uh, you're one of them as well. So thanks for being, uh, you know, a support both to the channel as well as, well as me personally. Well, let's uh, talk about two sectors where you're underweight. One is oil and gas. The second is ITS. You know, yes. in IT, I think Infosys is the largest bet. Now, both these two sectors, you're closer around 700 to 800 basis points lower than what uh, the index weightage is. Yes. Both of them have done well, mind you. Uh, would you look to add some or do you think you'd rather play the other themes? Like for you, construction has worked very, very well and you're largely overweight in comparison to the index. So will you yes. try to rejig your plans now? So, Nigel, I mean, right from the, where we started in May 22, uh, we had a very simple thing of overweight domestic, underweight global uh, place. And uh, be it IT, uh, be it oil and gas, uh, uh, even pharma, we have a mild underweight. Uh, and, uh, and it's broadly worked. Um, and that's showing up in our outperformance. So uh, on both the sectors, IT, we still believe. And, and then, you know, we got this mandate of state elections. It's a very big positive surprise, which again tilts back to more domestic and less global. Where there are uncertainties, we don't have answers to US, whether it's going to be a soft landing or hard landing. And it's not only US, you know, the world is, uh, is going through uh, a, a pain and uh, uh, even the geopolitical race. So... Again, we saw in the last uh, few days where uh, the market graduated to the domestic themes. And we, we still believe that domestic themes will uh, play out from here as well. On IT, we'll continue to remain underweight. And the reason is uh, the great ROCs, great ROEs, but the growth is lacking and we don't have clarity in the earnings. And the valuations are not that cheap. We still have the leader at 24 times. Um, Infosys at 21, 20, 22 times. They're not cheap for uh, lower growth rate. Uh, on oil and gas, uh, we have increased our weight to O&M companies last month, uh, earlier, not last month, and uh, they were really, really cheap uh, on valuation, and there was an uncertainty on policy framework, uh, but if we were to look beyond uh, you know, the coming election in May, any government would want to have certainty uh, within a framework. And I think it's very likely that, uh, you know, we would have a framework uh, within a band where there would be uh, fairly given freedom and that is, and they're significantly undervalued. And that's played out uh, in both the and companies. So there we are overweight. And of course, the rest of the oil and gas we are under. All right, uh, Sanjay, uh, stay with us. You know, we'll uh, <clears throat> focus on one particular name which is seeing a massive sell off, Paytm. And I want your thoughts as well, Sanjay. But let's actually bring in an analyst who tracks the uh, particular, you know, the company who's got coverage. Uh, stock's down about 18% or so. We've been, of course, telling you what uh, the news is. But let's get a view now. Rahul Jain, VP Research at Dolat Capital, is uh, with us. Rahul, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, how, uh, what do you make of? Uh, what Paytm is saying in terms of kind of uh, moving, uh, trying to now go into high ticket value loans away from the smaller loans. Uh, of course, I mean, this has been prompted by uh, what the RBI has done. Uh, market, of course, doesn't like it. It was a fa very fast area of growth. Your thoughts? Yeah, first of all, uh, congratulations on achieving the milestone. Uh, to your question, uh, I think uh, what has happened 
and the outlook uh, curtailed, which they have done on the uh, one of their loan segment, which is postpaid, is more to do with uh, what the industry thought process is right now for sub-50,000 kind of a loan, which close to around 38% of all loan distributed by Paytm. Uh, and of course, there is no much choice out there, and that's what uh, they are trying to align with what the market forces are thinking at this point. While the performance, which they keep sharing every quarter uh, of these loans, have uh, been quite uh, consistent and well uh, under any kind of a uh, risk of deterioration. So it's more coming from a supply perspective where they don't want uh, the lending partner don't want possibly. Uh, exposure to this segment, which uh, Paytm uh, also uh, wants to align with. Now, moving to higher ticket item, uh, higher ticket loans in the personal loan and merchant loan can kind of mitigate. And they have said that they've already started doing triple digit uh, kind of a run rate uh, on this higher ticket loan item. But uh, there is a big gap uh, which uh, we need to refill because uh, the postpaid base uh, would be around. Uh, five to six thousand crore impact that would happen uh, over one or two quarter, and that's need to be filled with this uh, higher ticket loan and general growth in the loan. So to that extent, uh, it would take some time, and that's why uh, it calls for two to four percent kind of a revenue impact on an overall basis, and five percent kind of a QoQ decline that we anticipate in the financial services segment uh, for them uh, in Q3. Uh, so the lending, the the value of the lending portfolio sub fifty thousand uh, category is five to six thousand crore for Paytm as of now. Yes, on the exit uh, quarter run rate of Q two, uh, that number is close to that. So if the top line is going to correct by two to four uh, percent, we're seeing a very sharp decline in the stock price. The stock has fallen seventeen, eighteen percent. So can you explain that for us? So two uh, percent, of course, is for uh, this particular year because we are taking only part of the impact in this year, and it will be gradual. Uh, if we more see from an FI25 perspective, the top line impact would be close to four percent, and uh, these are generally uh, much higher EBITDA margin business compared to uh, what is the rest of the businesses. So the EBITDA impact would be close to seven percent. Uh, that's what uh, our numbers suggest. And that's where the reaction is higher. Uh, of course, we think this is an overreaction. And as soon as we see uh, any further update on the uh, quarterly uh, matrix that they used to share in the past in terms of uh, what kind of run rate they have achieved, or maybe in the quarterly results, when, uh, when we see those results and the outlook they share at that point of time. Uh, and if there is much better outlook out there, which we think should be the case, I think some of the risk uh, and overreaction uh, would be receded. And that's why we think this is a significant opportunity to participate for people who are on the side or probably uh, someone who are uh, looking for uh, a good exposure uh, in a fintech uh, market. Okay, all right. Uh, Raul, it's good chatting with you. Looking forward to keeping in touch and getting you more often on the channel. Thanks so much for joining in and giving us your views on Paytm. But Sanjay as well was in conversation with us. Sanjay, thanks so much for standing by. What's your view on some of these fintech names? You know, some of them have seen a sharp correction from the top. Everyone thought the worst was behind them. But suddenly you have Paytm from 950-odd, well, back down to sub-700. Your view on, the, on these stocks? No, I think, uh, you know, uh, there is an element of revenue which, uh, uh, which will certainly take a hit and it will have an impact on EBITDA of this year and next year. Uh, our estimate is for next year, you know, if we're estimating 1,600 crore of EBITDA, there would be a 200 crore knockdown. And that would obviously have an earnings impact. And at times for high growth stocks, you do see some PD rating in the interim. And that's what market is done. But uh, we believe um, it's a little bit overdone. Um, and uh, it will take time for sure. But once it consolidates, uh, you know, eventually... Uh, it's a great management. Uh, you understands risk quite well, uh, and we believe uh, you know even this was quite proactive on their own, uh, where they could see the risk, and that's where um, uh, you know uh, in sync with the lenders, uh, they have stopped this product, uh, which is very healthy. 
And uh, as I said, the earnings knockdown doesn't have a direct linear impact. It is a non-linear impact because even price earnings get derated and that's what has happened. Um, so I think it will take time and then grow slowly, gradually from here on. Things should get better for KT. So in your portfolio in the new age tech company, Sanjay, what do you hold? Yeah, so we have 1.2% of Paytm and we have delivery. Uh, delivery is also a little bit of 1%. Um, luckily, our entry price is better for both, uh, but we'll hold on for this. And uh, uh, we've been holding for both of them. And if there is an overreaction, obviously, we'll look to add. At what level? Paytm's already down 15%, Sanjay. How much deeper does it yeah. have to go? Yeah, I mean, there could be, you know, right, Nigel, it's tough at times, but uh, the excesses happen on either side. So we'll wait mm. and watch, let the excesses happen on the other side and we're at the right appropriate level, which could be a little more down and we may look to act. And at times, uh, we've at least, it's helped us, our contra thinking has helped us, that when markets does overreact a bit, it does pain you for a while, but then eventually it pays off. So the understanding of value uh, at times comes very handy. And we believe, uh, you know, this has certainly has an impact. But uh, at the right entry point on an incremental basis, there will be an opportunity to buy and make money. So you have Paytm and Delivery. Uh, what about yes. Zomato and Nika? Did you consider, you know, investing in these two companies? No, Zomato, we did not participate on the downside and we didn't participate on the upside. So that's a miss on both the sides. Uh, Nika, we have uh, looked very closely. Uh, we're still not clear about the competitive intensity from other players. Uh, so we were watching it. We really like the management, their strategy. But uh, what we're not clear is the competitive intensity. And hence, uh, we'll watch it for a while, check, you know, see whether the growth levels, because all these companies, the implied growth assumptions are very high. I mean, they have to really grow 25, 30% to justify the valuation. So if growth does take a tailspin, uh, then you do get a double whammy of earnings getting impacted and P also getting derated. Um, and this is all future earnings, right? Uh, because near term, there are earnings are very, very minimal uh, for all of them. So you need to be a little more careful. And that's why we will watch Nika for a while before we uh, think about investing in them. I mean, uh, Zomato, it's, uh, you missed so far, but if you suggest speak with people like Ramdev, we, we had him earlier with the Zomato management. I mean, uh, you know, uh, he believes that the story is not yet. It's not yet. So that's... Yeah. <laughs> that's but it's but, never late, uh, you're right. It's, a, uh, it's never late. It's For a long... great management, uh, yeah. you know, if you, and the way I, I heard Ramdev ji, you know, if yeah. you think of a five and ten year view, uh, certainly, one should keep an open it's, mind, and we also have the same. All right, uh, Sanjay, it's a great uh, sort of a day to speak with you. Thank you very much for joining us with that perspective. Appreciate it, as always, uh, here on CNBC TV 18. 40 points lower is what we have on the Nifty, so, uh, so that's a, that means a 20 point slip in the last 10 minutes. 20,896 is where we are at. We'll take a quick commercial break here. Uh, but uh, when we uh, come back, we will get you excerpts of our exclusive conversation with S. Narain, CIO at ICICI Prudential AMC. Stay tuned. tell you the story of the last quarter of a century. We'll speak about how we've been chasing excellence. How being a visionary helps us look into the future. Consistency keeps us moving ahead. Credibility is what keeps us bound to our integrity. Being accountable means being unfailing in our commitment to you. Being innovative makes us open to change. Empowering others becomes our credo. Being influential means giving you more tangible benefits. Being dependable means building your trust. And being inspirational means constantly evolving. It's a quarter century of living by our values to create value for you. CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence.
CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Welcome back. Uh, one of the big movers of the day is Startup Power. The stock is up close to about 12% and this week the stock has seen a rally of 18%. GM Financial has upgraded the stock, raised the target price. Vivek joins in with the details. Vivek. Absolutely. You know, when you're talking about the entire power sector, all of the stocks today are doing very, very well. In fact, Tata Power, you know, they had their analyst meet on November 28th and post that, you know, where the company went ahead and reiterated some of the targets and gave, you know, a guidance of doubling their revenue pat in EBITDA by FA27. All of this, uh, you know, has ensured that the stock has moved over 15% just uh, post that analyst meet itself. Today, very interesting, like you mentioned, JM Financial has upgraded the their stance on the stock to a buy rating from the hold that they had earlier. They have raised their target price quite significantly to 350 rupees a share. What they're saying is that the recalibrated strategy of the company includes, number one, tapping into the higher margin group captain renewable energy business from the slightly lower margin business that they're doing as far as solar EPC was concerned. Number two, they're exiting low value businesses. Number three, venturing into brownfield pumped hydro storage, which they believe offers significant visibility as far as earnings is concerned going into the future. Number two, they're also expanding the transmission business beyond distribution. And the most important point that they are, you know, at this point of time stating is that they believe that the Mundra issue that the company has been grappling with so long, currently the Mundra plant is, you know, operating under Section 11, you know, of the Emergency Power Act. They believe that there could be some long-term solution in terms of a PPA that could be signed. And this is something that, you know, has made GM go ahead and turn quite constructive on the stock. So they forecast a revenue EBITDA as well as a pat CAGR of 15, 23 and 32% respectively till FY26. And, and they believe that the increasing asset base as well as the improved margins profile should support the earnings going forward. Interestingly, the stock has gone ahead and, you know, crossed the 1 lakh crore market capitalization, the sixth Tata Group company to do so today. Mm. That was interesting. The last bit, right? The Mundra bit. Uh, Vivek, uh, is all the power which is sold... Uh, from the Mundra unit, uh, is it via? Is it all uh, sold on a merchant basis, and there are no PPS at this stage? A well, long-term right, PPS? Well, right now, you know, it's sold under Section 11. So right now, it is mm. sold on a cost plus basis. So you know, not entirely correct that it's neither a long-term PPA and not on the merchant. You know, it's a it's a direct. Uh, uh, you could call it a direct agreement between the company or that particular plant and the state. So, you know, they're supplying to various states, you know, one of the largest states being Gujarat. They also have a tie-up with uh, Rajasthan. The company, you know, for the past many years has been trying to get this converted into a long-term PPA. So, any visibility on that front, uh, you know, we've been quizzing the management constantly, you know, whether there is any visibility. And they're saying that talks are going on, talks are constructive. But any, you know, firm uh, resolution that comes in their favour would be quite a significant positive because the long-term PPA gives a visibility of a much longer time period than just the three-month or six-month visibility that the company gets when it operates under the Emergency Act. All right. Uh, no, that's very interesting. And of course, I mean, if this Mundra issue gets resolved, uh, there's, of course, Adani Power as well, right, with their Mundra unit, which uh, which, which should be in focus. Uh, Tata Power is up, uh, I think, 15-16% uh, this month. That is in the month of November. Adani is up 30%. Uh, so, maybe uh, Tara is playing a bit of catch-up as well. That element perhaps is also there apart from everything that uh, Vivek mentioned. Well, uh, that's the power space and that's a big move coming in on uh, Tata Power. I spoke with S. Narain, a CIO at ICICI Prudential AMC. Narain, of course, is a hardcore value investor. But uh, where is the value? That essentially was the focus of our uh, conversation. Listen into some key excerpts of that conversation. Many of the sectors which we actually were positive on three years back, mm. which were non-consensus, mm. they all have played out. Mm. So we were positive on telecom, mm. we were positive on power, mm. we were positive on metals at that point of time. Metals, of course, played out very quickly. Mm. And uh, those sectors have played out. Mm. So now we are actually struggling, which is the next set of sectors to play out at this point of time, auto, for example. Mm. Auto has played out. Played out. Mm. All those have played out. Mm. So now we are struggling actually, which is the net, next set of sectors which mm. actually will play out. Mm. That is why we, when we did whatever work we could do, what mm. we realized was it is on capitalizations that uh, it was clearer. Mm. So if you look at any sector, you mm. take even a sector like banking and financial services. Mm. The top banks haven't done well. Mm. 
Whereas the bottom small banks, many of them small financial services companies, they've done extremely well. Mm. And uh, if you take IT, mm. the top IT companies have done badly. Mm. The small IT companies have done extremely well. Mm. So what we realized over a period of time at this point of time is that it is the mega caps in each sector which has done extremely badly mm. compared to the smaller companies in the same sector. Which have done well. So this is what uh, we realized. If you look sectorally, there were sectors which we used to be very negative on. Uh, like FMCG, for example. Mm. Those sectors have done extremely badly at this point of time. Mm. That no longer it makes sense for you, for us to be so negative on these sectors. But mm. the irony in these sectors is these valuations have not corrected. Mm. It is only that the sector, other sector valuations have gone, gone up, up substantially. Mm. So maybe on a relative basis, this sector has become cheaper, but not on an absolute basis. Absolutely. See, the, and uh, what we find is some of the conglomerate mega caps, mm. they've all become much cheaper because they've underperformed significantly in the last three years. Mm. So it has become much more of a relative game to say this is better mm. than an absolute game because when you have had such a whips, whipsaw big move in the last three years mm. and this is what we used to tell three years back mm. that there were so many cheap sectors at that point of time mm. and with lot of potential to put money mm. but those sectors everything has played out mm. and that's why when I tell people that in the last six months we have told even before this big move mm. that today the long term return story is more moderate. Mm. People say, no, 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 it can't be moderate. After all, we have seen very big returns. But mm. we tell them, 10 years, you've had 20, more than 20% return in small and mid-cap index. Mm. And you know what we have seen from the real estate story of 2002 to 2013, mm. when you have this more than 20% return in a more than a decade CAGR, mm. actually people tend to think that it will go on forever. Mm. But it never goes on forever and you have to prepare yourself for a more moderate return period. Mm. But it's so tough to convince people mm. that you are, you are in for a more moderate return period and uh, that is very tough because every PE mm. which I had seen in 2003 to 13, in 13 what the price to earnings was in ICICI we used to discuss and today what we discuss, we give valuations which are much higher than what we used to give in 2013 in our company. Well, there are no cheap sectors anymore, but it's all about relative valuation. We also got up with Ramdev Agrawal, Chairman, Co-Founder at Motilal Ospal Financial Services, to discuss his take on the current market up move. Listen in. It's scary to see at what pace market has moved from 20 to 21,000. It's been just a mm -hmm. few days, you know. So I don't think we can maintain this pace. We, we need calibration, otherwise wrong things start happening, wrong kind of trades start happening, wrong kind of money starts coming in. So I think we need a little better, uh, but I don't know what will happen in the short run in the market. Digital era is there, so we have companies which can grow very rapidly. So the complexion of top companies can change the way it has changed in the U.S. I think the, there, there is a chance that uh, here also we may, may, we may find 30-40% growth for these kind of companies, a uh, new normal altogether. Well, we'll slip into a short break. When you come back, we'd like to see a bit of a move because the weekly expiry will play out for the time being. The Nifty is down, close around 40 points. Nimesh will be joining in to give us a sense in terms of dealing room action as well. on a quarter century of excellence.
CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Welcome back. Well, the markets are still down close to 45 points. But a few stocks should come up for you on the screen. I think Bajaj Auto is deserving a bit of a mention because that's come off the high point of the day. HDFC Life is another name. You pull up the intraday chart, you'll see what I'm talking about. That one as well has dipped a little bit. So that one should come up for you. And LTI Mindtree, they did well yesterday. That stock as well has slipped a little bit from the top. So keep an eye out on a few of these names. So Midesh Shakal is back with us though. Midesh, what are the calls you have for us in terms of buying or shorting today? which you can square off in the next few days? So, Nigel, uh, I think, you know, uh, we have been advocating trading on the long side despite the fact that the markets are slightly negative right now. But we'll continue with the long theme. I have a BTST calls, uh, one on uh, Britannia, which I would recommend taking a BTST position with the stop at 49.90 and look for a target of around uh, 50, 60 over here. The other one... Uh, it's slightly overbought, but I think, you know, the trend is very strong for Titan. So, Titan is a BTST with a stop at 35.69 for targets of 36.29. Okay. Uh, you like Titan. Titan continues to hit, uh, you know, fresh record highs. Now approaching 3,600 on that. Uh, Mitesh, is the dip on Bharti Airtel worth buying? Because the stock has been on a one-way tear, and today with that supply overhang with Warburg selling, Warburg Pinkers selling their balance stake, uh, it's corrected about 2%. See, uh, Bharti, again, you know, I think like many stocks, it was extremely overbought, and uh, it started correcting a couple of days back. I think good support area for Bharti is closer to about uh, 980. So I think around those levels, I would expect a bounce back. I'm not sure whether we'll resume, resume the trend or we'll go through some consolidation. But uh, if you're a short-term bidder, extremely short-term bidder, around 980, buy with a 10-point stop loss and look for a 15, uh, sorry, 25, 30 point kind of a, a bounce back from there. Uh, two other names. One is Paytm. Uh, Mitesh, if you have a call or, I mean, where does the stock find some support? And the other is LIC. I think we've discussed this in the past as well. I think it's seeing, seeing another move. Uh, so, interesting activity. The LIC, I've been very positive. Prashant, I think, you know, we spoke about that and I gave a slightly positional kind of a target at about 860. So, I, know, I think we are on our way to achieve that level. Uh, stay long here. Trail your stop is now to about today's low, which is 736. About 860 is what I'm looking at. And Paytm, I think, you know, because of that, uh, ever since that uh, selling by uh, Warren Buffett kind of news came into picture and the stock has been under pressure and now it's kind of getting into a, strong, a slightly stronger uh, negative zone. So I think for the timing, I'll avoid Paytm. In fact, it's broken today below the 200 average with a gap down. And the setup on the weekly and the monthly charts also has turned slightly negative. So for me, it's an avoid. Okay. All right. Uh, Mitesh, uh, <clears throat> thanks very much uh, for that. So those are individual trades with uh, Mitesh coming through. Uh, <clears throat> Nimesh is uh, joining us now uh, to, on D Street Chatter. <clears throat> Nimesh, hi, uh, good afternoon. Nimesh has not been working the phones. He's actually been visiting dealing rooms today, <laughs> <laughs> speaking with uh, people physically. Nimesh, uh, good to see you. What are you picking up? Well, Prashant, you know, on, on, on the screen, it may look like it's a day of consolidation, but there's a lot of action in the broader markets. The mid-cap index is up another 0.7%. Uh, a lot of individual stocks are really outperforming today. So today, the market is not about Nifty or the Bank Nifty, but it's the broader markets and the mid-cap and small caps. That's the big big theme for the day. And within that, I guess it's the utility sector, which is doing a huge move. Uh, a lot of power stocks are buzzing in trade. The power index is up two and a half, almost 3 percent the utility index is up almost 4% so big moves in the utility stocks today across whether it's a PSU or a, or a private utility stock all are buzzing in trade so big moves and looks like there is a bit of buying interest as well in that particular space. Uh, from, an, uh, from, a, from a technical perspective I, I guess you know uh, you, you could further see consolidation with a bit of a positive buy so that's, that's clearly visible uh, in, the, in the broader markets as well. Uh, but uh, while the Nifty Bank uh, also looks little much, pretty much flat, but within within that, the private banks are well bid is what I understand. So again, uh, there is a bit of uh, you know bias towards the private banks from a flow perspective. So while the flow is mixed, it's largely towards private banks, and there is a big move in the utility stocks today. Okay, all right, Namesh. Uh, what about individual stocks? You mentioned a couple of sectors, but individual stocks, what are you picking up? Well, see, in terms of individual names, the first stock on my list is IEX, a big move in that stock and on large volumes as well. Uh, you know, for the last few days, there was delivery-based you know, buying happening in that particular stock. And looks like even in today's trade, there will be a large delivery volume and some long-only long fund seems to be quite active 
in IEX. So that's the reason why that stock is buzzing. The second name is uh, IDFC First Bank. While the stock is under pressure after a large block, we know the seller entity, uh, but to, the, the, the feedback that I have is that a leading long only fund was a buyer uh, in, in IDFC First Bank today. So the disclosures will be quite interesting there. The third name is Shankara Buildcon. Uh, you know, been consolidating in a very narrow range, but the first signs of some bit of uh, you know, buying interest back. So the uh, HNF was are quite active, and some large HNF investors seems to be buying as well. That is Shankara Buildcon. And the last one is BEL. Uh, the company reported very strong order book, and there were strong buy flows as well. So on back of that, even BEL is buzzing in today's trade. Mm. Image is one, uh, two, uh, two more questions, maybe out of syllabus, but I'll uh, pose them <laughs> to you anyway. LIC, are you hearing anything? Uh, uh, I mean, is there any institutional interest here, really, which is uh, coming through? One. And second, uh, uh, power names. I mean, actually, I was looking at, we've been talking about Tata Power all day. Yeah. But it's not just Tata Power. There is SJV and NHPC. Torrent Power is up another 7%. So, Prashant, uh, as far as the power stocks are concerned, as I said, you know, the entire utility basket is doing good today. And overall, the feedback is, uh, you know, with, 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 the, with the kind of state election we've seen, I guess for the, for the, for the next five years, the big theme is going to be uh, energy transition. And, and, ac and across the energy sp spectrum, there is a lot of interest from larger institutions. So, power as a, as a space, uh, I would say there is a lot of institutional interest as well. And, uh, you know, the stocks like IEX, Startup Power are well bid as well. So, that's the feedback on the power stocks. Uh, on LIC, uh, I, I don't think there is a lot of institutional interest, so to speak. But again, you know, uh, the, uh, the entire PSU basket is, is, is doing good for the last many days. And now I think the focus has shifted to the, under, uh, to the laggards within the, within the PSU basket. So LIC stands out. It's been a rank underperformer, still down from the IPO price. Similarly, you know, a lot of the uh, housing, uh, housing finance companies within the PSU basket. Look at even Hutco in today's state. That's like the 5 percent. So uh, clearly the uh, underperforming PSUs is what... A lot of uh, HNIs and a lot of investors looking to chase, are, are chasing now and hence. Uh, that's, that's, that's the reason why LIC and other stocks like Hoodco are buzzing in trade. All right, perfect. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Nimesh. Uh, well, uh, let's get an independent market expert, Amrish Paligo, who joins us on the show. Hi, Amrish. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, party time for us. It's our birthday and you've been part of our journey, so we thank you for that as well. <laughs> we uh, want to know I... what's the birthday special, uh, Amrish, for our viewers. Normally, you give us one stock. Yeah, I... Tell us which right. is that stock today and with some rationale. Uh, Nigel, uh, first of all, congratulations to all of you on your 25 years you. Uh, birthday. I'm uh, really glad that I've been a part of this journey, beautiful journey, uh, for the last 23 years. And uh, my first interaction, I remember, was sometime in 2001. And uh, remember the studio I'm in, which was actually a tent in a compound in Worli. <laughs> I think we've, come, we've really come a long way. And uh, if I look back, I must have done nothing less than 2,500 to 3,000 interactions in the last 20 years plus with you guys. And I've actually watched most of you actually grow in your job. And, uh, like I remember some of you, it was the first day, first week that we met. I mean, it's a long way in the last two decades for most of you. So wish all of you the very best going ahead. Uh, and uh, talking about my pick, it's uh, Aether Industries. I mean, there was a fire incident recently in one of their plants, and due to which we have seen a very good correction. So I, I mean, I see this as an opportunity. Uh, Aether is a major manufacturer of advanced intermediates and specialty chemicals, mainly for sectors like pharma and agrochemicals, as well as other sectors. Contract research and manufacturing also is a major source of revenue for them. It's about 34% of their top line. And for many of their products, they are the sole Indian manufacturers. Uh, 290 plus uh, customers across 22 countries, market clients across various sectors. They've actually added about nine new customers last quarter. And uh, recently, they announced uh, commercialization of Converge Polyols technology with the Saudi Aramco. And uh, I think this manufacturing should start sometime in FI25. They recently had a QIP, recently in the sense June, about 750 crores, which, which was actually meant for CAPEX, and that's on track. I don't think this fire incident will actually affect the CAPEX. Uh, Q2 earnings were a bit flattish. Uh, revenue and margins were muted due to uh, destocking of uh, inventory at the customer end. But in the last five years, if you see, they've witnessed about 44% CAGR. And now we are seeing the raw material prices coming down. This should re reflect possibly uh, from Q3 onwards. Uh, EPS for FI25 was expected to be 20, but I think that will get affected because of the fire incident. But EPS for FI26 is on track, I suppose, and I'm expecting that to be 26. So with that, my target price is 1,040. Uh, the stock hasn't done too much. Uh, Year-to-date, uh, Aether Industries is down 5%. 
and in the last one year, the stock has slipped close to about 13%. Uh, Amrish, you've liked Tata Power in the entire power basket. But now, would you like to diversify and perhaps look at other Tata, you know, other power names, NHPC, SJVN, any, you know, Torrent Power is doing well. Anything else that you like? No, I mean, they've all moved up. So I'll not really buy anything fresh at this point of time. In fact, uh, I mean, I had a target price of uh, 230 for uh, Tata Power. And uh, we are somewhere close to that. So I would possibly book uh, partial profits and then hold the balance for long term. I won't really buy anything fresh at this point of time. Mm. Who would have thought, na? Tata Power, 325 today. Uh, during COVID, went to 25. So, you know, if you had the guts, if you had the gumption at that point of time, if you believe... You know, that uh, you're going to be uh, in for the long haul. You've made a 15-bagger in just, what, three years or so. But going ahead, what do you think about Paytm? You know, today there's a bit of a hit because of the negative news flow. But That's the true. stock's down 15%. At around 660, 670, do you think risk-reward would favor? Or would you say, we have got plenty of better opportunities out there, Nigel? Let's avoid this one. No, I think it's an opportunity. I think it's been a bit overdone uh, post uh, this news of uh, I mean, uh, below 50,000 uh, loans. Uh, in fact, uh, they may not be uh, uh, I mean, too positive on that. So uh, I think that's a buying opportunity. It can correct a bit more from here, but I would surely start buying at this point of time and maybe look at buying more to closer to about uh, 550, 575 levels. Amrish, to stay on, need to slip into a very short break. We'll come back and about uh, 10 minutes left for markets to close. CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Link, link. Wait, wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rolling? Well, finally, we got a bit of a pause. Uh, that's about all that you can say about today's session. After a thousand-point rally on the Nifty in the last six sessions, uh, today the market uh, was somewhat in the reddish zone for most of the day. Even then, from the lows, there was strong recovery, which came through. Nifty Bank has, uh, you know, it closed lower yesterday. Uh, today also was mostly an indecisive kind of a session. Mid caps and small caps, better. I mean, about a third of a percent, half a percent higher in that zone. Uh, what did, uh, you know, the momentum has been in PSU names and there there was no let up. So the CPSC index, strong, 1% plus. The energy index, 1% plus. So, uh, you know, both uh, tick marks on the positive side. What was under pressure? FMCG, metals and IT services were three areas where you had uh, stocks which sold off. I'll start with large caps. The cuts coming through in names like Bharti, Lever, uh, ONGC, which uh, saw some selling pressure. Gains in power names. And, I'll, you know, there's, that's more in the broader market. But in the Nifty, Power Grid did well. Adani Ports uh, continued to do well. And there was Ultratech, which did quite well. Market breadth was, uh, you know, not decisively, but comfortably in favor of advances. And I'll start with the power names there in the broader market. Tata Power, SJVN, NHPC, Torrent Power, lots of names here. Adani Total Gas uh, doing well. LIC has had a spectacular run for, this is the second week, by the way, of the run. IEX up on strong volumes. Z Entertainment about 5% today as well. And there were other names. Concord, GICRE, Home First was up sharply. And something like a Himat Sinka Seed, which also uh, ran up. Cuts coming through in uh, Paytm, which sold off sharply. Of course, there's news there. Ircon, AB Capital under pressure. These sugar names, Balrampur, Praj, EID, Paddy. Uh, cuts coming through there. And uh, Scient, Radico, and Wellspun Cop were some of the others which saw pullbacks. These stocks have done quite well recently. Markets had been getting a little overstretched, a little overheated in the very near term. And that uh, basically led to today's pause. Uh, we've been kind of ignoring what's happening on the global action where things have been going a little south, uh, southwards. U.S. markets have looked a little iffy over the last two or three sessions. Uh, will that come to dominate the discourse once again? I think uh, that's something which we will watch as we come back tomorrow.
CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Okay, welcome back. We're 25 points lower is what we have on the index. So uh, it's a pause and uh, that's about it. Nothing else. Abrish, uh, you know, all these uh, sugar slash ethanol kind of names, Balrampur Chini down sharply. I think down about 12% two days now. Praj is down sharply. This uh, South based EID Parry, uh, which is uh, seeing about a 6, 7 odd percent cut. Any thoughts? Uh, see, I mean, if you look back uh, in the last couple of years, I think the big game changer for, for the sugar industry was that they could choose whether they, they want to make ethanol or they want to make sugar or they want to make both. But uh, uh, lately, there have been, I mean, there has been rumors in the last two, three days uh, that uh, possibly uh, government could uh, plan to discourage manufacturing of ethanol vis-a-vis -vis sugar because uh, they surely can, can, can't afford to have sugar prices going up just before the elections. So, I mean, this sort of a, a news, uh, I mean, making rounds on the street, I think that's what has affected uh, these stocks. But it is yet to be confirmed, so not really sure on that. But if, if this is confirmed, that is negative. Hmm. Amrish, what about LIC? It's almost a 500,000 market cap uh, company yet again. If you are daring enough and you said at 530, nothing to lose, let's buy between 500 to 600 rupees, you'll be happy today. The problem is those have got allocated in the IPO as well, still they're way out of the money. I'll tell you who's the happiest, the government of India. If they sell 2%, 10,000 crores is what they can raise. What's your take though, at around 800 bucks? Uh, see, I mean, in the last uh, couple of months, we have seen the markets really running up. But then we didn't have the holding and investment companies moving up. They started moving up lately. We had Tata Investment moving up. Now Pilani has moved up in the last few days. And the rest of the uh, like uh, holding companies have done well. I mean, what is LIC? I mean, leave aside the insurance business. LIC is again a holding and an investment company, uh, which was not really moving with the markets. I mean, uh, like uh, despite most of the stocks moving up, I think the Adani stocks moving up possibly gave that Philip or that catalyst to LIC. And uh, we've seen that stock moving. Uh, I think it can still move up further, but I think the major resistance for, I mean, for any IPO, uh, which, which opens below the IPO price and uh, stays below that for a long time, for it to move beyond the IPO price takes a long time. So I think it can go to levels of about 900, 925. I think going beyond that in this run could be a bit difficult. Amrish, to stay on, Shireen Bhan is currently in conversation with Rhythm Desai, the managing director, Morgan Stanley, and a whole host of special guests at the CII Global Economic Policy Summit. So let's cut across. And Ashish, to you first, and Rhythm, I'm going to start by asking you, the role, relevance, and significance of the Indian capital markets. You know, I'm using the 25-year time frame only because it's relevant to us at CNBC TV 18 today. But as we look ahead, the distance covered, and more importantly, the distance to cover rhythm, what's your bull case? So let me just establish, firstly, the importance. Uh, I, I'm sure this audience already knows, but, you know, it's always useful to put it into numbers. Uh, so in the last 20 years, for example, uh, the total investments in this country have been about U.S. dollar 9 trillion. Uh, of this number, about $5 trillion have been done by the corporate sector, $4 trillion by the government. The government funds it with taxes and uh, borrowings. The private corporate sector funds it with, uh, with the capital markets and its own profits um, and the capital markets in a broader sense, both equity and debt markets. Uh, so you cannot get growth because the capital markets fund investments. This is very simplistic. Now, out of that uh, $5 trillion, about half a, billion, half a trillion dollars have been directly raised from the stock markets. And it forms the anchor to all borrowings and investments that corporate India does. Um, so this is one. The second aspect, which I think is less uh, understood uh, and is less appreciated, is the impact on wealth. Uh, while you know, entrepreneurs go about creating wealth by starting businesses, the common man on the street has only one source of creating wealth, which is the equity markets. And uh, thankfully, the common man on the street in India has now learned it uh, over the last 10, 15 years, especially over the last uh, eight or nine years. And you can see that in the flows. But the, the impact of that wealth comes directly on consumption. And then you basically get better growth. So there's a virtuous cycle that a buoyant and, uh, and a functioning capital market creates, which goes from investments to consumption back into investments. 
So its role in the economy, uh, Shireen, is, is hardly to be underestimated. It's, in fact, one of the most important agents of economic development. One of the most important agents of economic development uh, is the capital market, and you should not, and you, it would be at your peril that you underestimate the significance of that. But uh, if I could just build on the wealth creation impact that you spoke of, as well as the investment impact that you spoke of, you know, if we look at the trajectory that we've covered so far in terms of earnings growth, as well as what that's finally meant as far as, uh, you know, the, the market growth is concerned, from here now to 2030 or 2047, which is what we're expected to forecast for today. Uh, what's the expectation? What kind of earnings growth are we talking about and what kind of investment growth will that fuel? So I think uh, broadly speaking for every unit of growth India needs currently about four units of capital. Uh, so you can do the math depending on what growth rate uh, you know the country achieves but I, I you know the back of the envelope calculation is that we need about six and a half seven percent growth to employ uh, the 10 to 15 million people that will join the workforce every year. So that's the type of growth rate you need. And therefore, you need about 28 percentage points of GDP as capital to generate that. Now, of course, our capital efficiency will improve. So the amount of capital needed will decline in time. But that's approximately the calculation. And I think uh, the, the, the stock market, for example, will be a very important ingredient to this because without that private risk capital, we will not be able to generate this growth. And I think one of the most important policy changes that mm. we have put in place, and this happened in 2015 uh, when, when the mm. government let retirement funds buy stocks. Now, such a change had happened in the U.S. Uh, in 1980 when 401k plans were allowed to buy stocks. And what it seeded was... Okay, that's Rhythm Desai, Morgan Stanley in conversation with Shireen Ban. We'll go back to that uh, in a bit. But I think we're also kind of winding down today's session. Two minutes to go for market closing. And uh, it's going to be uh, sort of neither here nor there kind of a day. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, we last this week, every day has been a big day with, uh, you know, uh, yesterday we were up about 80 points. Otherwise, it's been, you know, in some days, uh, you know, double centuries or uh, triple centuries. So it's been a very large week. Uh, so as to uh, speak. Uh, today, it's quieter, really. Bank Nifty, uh, let's just take a look at whether that index finally ends in the green. Barely so. It's almost, you know, blinking. Five-point change on uh, the Nifty Bank, so nothing at all. But broader market, mid-caps and small-caps are much better. The small-cap index is up about a third of a percent. The mid-cap index is up about 0.6%. So that's uh, indices change today. Well, in terms of uh, the large cap action, Adani Ports reverses after yesterday's fall. Top Nifty gainer to 1.5% rally. The sector of the day was clearly power. In the large cap space, Power Grid, NTPC gaining 1% to 1%. But outside of that, Tata Power, double digit up move, SJV and NHPC all see some solid gains. On the losing side, Bharti Airtel is the top loser to 1.5% lower. Uh, and now below the 1,000 rupee mark, at least on the final tick for Bharti Airtel. This is after Warburg Pincus in a block deal sold their stake in party Airtel. HUL corrected, Apollo Hospitals, ONGC ending in the red. Well, that's right, uh, Rima. You know, on the bottom of the screen, you're getting that news coming in there. Government has asked Mills to not use sugar juice for ethanol output for the next fiscal. So I think that was the fear in terms of news on the sugar space. And that's where the last two sessions, you uh, have seen a sharp downtick, particularly on stocks like Balram Purchini. The stock, I think, in two sessions is down more than 15%. Today, it's our, saw a bit of a bounce back, but I think this is official news that's coming in now. And we'll try to analyze that in further detail. But for the time being, this stock, particularly if you pull up the intraday chart in the last few minutes, you saw a big, big downtick on that one as well. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, that's the uh, sort of uh, session today. And uh, that brings us to an end in this edition of Closing Bell uh, as well. But uh, celebrations continue, uh, right? Celebrations continue, and I think we can toss it across to the newsroom where the cake cutting ceremony uh, is underway. CNBC at 25.
one man who actually works for five teams. Shankar! <laughs> and guess what? 20 to 24, no, 25 is what we are entering. So 20 to 24 is the person who should be cutting the cake but who is actually earning for the company. <laughs> Shireen Bhatt! Celebrating her birthday, so she cuts the cake.